بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسول الكريم أما بعد I just wanted to put out a small announcement and just so we know what we can do what we'll be, we'll be doing in the coming Eid there is a bit of confusion about what's happening what's not happening and people want some clarification so to start off we'll just it's unfortunate that the circumstances are such that again we won't be having Eid Salah in the Masjid uh, because as we know that there's a limitation to how many people we can have in the masjid and then there's the spreading and there's the chance of spreading of coronavirus so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he that he relieves us from this and so the brothers and sisters can meet again once again in the masjid and hopefully we can conduct our Eid prayer like usual but uh, what to do in this circumstances and how should we approach this day there are a few things I want to speak about briefly I'm not going to make this too long it's just an announcement of what's going to take place so inshallah all the brothers and sisters that requested by 8 o'clock inshallah Eid Salah should be completed on the 10th of the Hijjah inshallah make sure that Eid Salah has been finished so hopefully they can start at 7.45 they can pray get together Pray Eid Salah and then inshallah at 8 o'clock I will be putting up uh, a khutbah so all the brothers and sisters can attend together inshallah. Uh, just to be mindful about four things on the day of Eid. To begin off, Rasulullah sallallahu said, In the al ayyam, that the most greatest of all the days according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the day of Eid, the day of Eid al Adha. So this is a very noble day. Yawm uh, nahar and after it, ثم يوم القر. This is one hadith. And in another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يوم عرفة ويوم النحر وأيام التشريق عيدنا أهل الإسلام وهي أيام أكل وشرب. Subhanallah. As we know, because this is a day of Eid, it is impermissible for anybody to fast on this day. For every nation, there are certain days for Eid, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given. And to this Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, two days have been given. Eid al-Fitr, which has already passed after Ramadan. And Eid al-Adha, which is this Eid that is coming. It is the most noble day according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even if you are not performing Hajj, there are certain rituals and, and things that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would do outside Hajj or well in that year that he did not perform Hajj as well, he would do certain actions. And we should be mindful about those things as well. So four main things I want to focus on. First thing on the day of Eid is the Eid Salah. And when um, uh, and prior to the Eid Salah we should be reading takbirat. So since so the takbirat which is Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar la ilaha illallah wallahu akbar Allahu Akbar walillahi alhamd try to read them as much as we can. Loudly uh, and just prepare for Eid Salah and I rec I request all the brothers and sisters once again to we start the Eid Salah or to pray at least the Eid Salah at 7.45 because you can pray any time after, after Fajr time finishes until the Zenith but uh, at 8 o'clock I'll inshallah start the khutbah so the brothers and sisters can attend and there's some sort of unity that we can feel inshallah. For Eid Salah, prior to Eid, just because we're not meeting others and we're not going around in this uh, because of the uh, because of the circumstances, does not mean we should disassociate with the actions that Rasulullah Sallallahu did. Rasulullah Sallallahu would put on the best of his clothes, so until without israf, without going extravagant, but try to put on the best of our clothes, have a shower, and then put on a good itar. Even if you're at home, we we do these things, and Rasulullah Sallallahu he would. Uh, the, the difference between this Eid and the Eid al-Fitr is that Rasulullah sallallahu would eat something sweet in Eid al-Fitr but in this Eid Rasulullah sallallahu would not eat anything until his animal has been slaughtered and the first thing that he would take was the meat from his animal and the second thing that we have to focus on is the Qurbani is the animal that we're going to slaughter so, so the sacrificial animal uh, it has to be done after Eid Salah. If it is done before Eid Salah, it is not acceptable. In one hadith, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi has said that one of the most noble actions that can be performed on this day is the slaughtering of the animal. We understand the importance of doing udhiya. According to some ulama, it has been said that it is wajib upon every person who has the sufficient wealth. Therefore, the second most important thing, well, obviously we perform Eid Salah, and then secondly, we have to do our qurbani. We can't do, we can't sacrifice the animal prior to the uh, prayer, to uh, to the prayer. It has to be done after the prayer, inshallah. Third thing, inshallah, as much as we can, is to do sadaqah. 
So it was part of the habit of Rasulullah Sallallahu that he would divide the portion of the meat that he used to get into three. So one portion was for his own family and he used to eat from it himself. Another portion was that he used to give it to his neighbors, his relatives, the close people. And that's what we can do over here because we have many, many people who are close, who are relatives, family, friends. Inshallah, try to give them some meat as well and it will be a means of happiness and building of happiness. Uh, and we can feel that celebration of Eid. And, and, and one third portion was for the fuqara and the masakin, those people who were poor. So if we know any sisters and brothers who are not of the, not most financially stable, or so inshallah we can give a small portion of our meat to them as well. And inshallah it will be a means of barakah for us. Uh, so this was the third thing, which was sadaqah, right? Eid, Eid prayer, first thing. Second thing is the, the sacrificial animal. Third thing is giving some small amount of meat. Fourth thing that we can focus on on this day is to increase in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as we can. It's a day of celebration. It's a day that we can eat. It's haram to fast on this day. So while we're celebrating, make sure we don't, we don't transgress the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we have mixed gatherings, na'udhu billah, or we start, uh, we start going beyond what is allowed in celebration and eating things that are not halal and eating or consuming things which are, uh, which are not good for us. So just keep everything at level and in Inshallah, we will have a good Eid and celebrate as uh, as as best as we can. But uh, out of the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, one specific du'a or one specific takbir that has been taught uh, taught to us by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. And there's a different there's two narrations that have come, but as I mentioned, both of them are correct. So. We try to increase this takbir as much as we can. We start saying it since Fajr time, continue saying it until Eid Salah. After Eid Salah, after the khutbah has been performed, then again we can, throughout the day, we can say this Eid, we can say this takbirat as much as we can. Now a brief summary of the Eid Salah. So as I mentioned last time as well, the similar method is going to be done this time as well. So we try to get the three males and come together with the family inshallah. And then we can perform Eid Salah in a similar manner as last time. In the first raka'ah, before recitation, we do the takbirat al-tahrimah, Allahu Akbar. And then three additional takbirat, the person who is leading and then the people behind him can follow. Three additional takbirat, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then... After we uh, we complete the recitation of the first rak'ah, we're going to ruku'ah, we're going to sajda, we get up for second rak'ah. In our second rak'ah, we start off by reading Alham Surah Fatiha, then we read another surah, and then we do three additional takbirat. This method is according to the method of the Hanafi scholars. Uh, there are other scholars who's cha who say... Um, a different method who, 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 who inform us of a different method so people can follow according to the madhahib inshallah so these are just some of the brief uh, summary of what's going to be happening what's the Eid program hopefully inshallah we can speak to each other on the Facebook chat as well and be ready to inshallah receive updates as we go along Jazakumullahu kulla khair wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen and Eid Mubarak a early Eid Mubarak to everyone hopefully inshallah in Eid we can uh, we can meet and greet inshallah jazakumullah khairan one more last thing i just want to mention is just be careful about the guidelines that have been taught, told to us with regards to our health and safety and keeping in the guidelines inshallah we can we can do our eid salah jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh